Just look how silly this International Space Station is. Look. Hello, Herman from Belgium. You wanted to know how we wash our clothes in space. Well, actually, we don't. We don't have a washing machine here, and also it would up, use up a lot of water, and water is very scarce in space. We Strange that water's scarce in space, because uh, your colleagues seem to spend quite a lot of time throwing water around. What makes it even worse is they seem to be throwing it around in an electrical environment. So they're throwing a sparse resource around in a dangerous environment unnecessarily. What a silly charade this is. Continue though, please, fella. Also recycle our water and we only use it to drink or to wash. So therefore our clothes, we just take a stack of clothes with us and at the end when they get dirty, they get trashed and they go back to the earth in the Progress or the ATV, the European cargo vehicle that sometimes comes to the International Space Station. Of course, we don't have a lot of clothes because if we would have fresh clothing or new clothing every day, this would mean a lot of mass that we need to take up. So we have, for example, this type of shirts or the T-shirts that I'm wearing right now, or here you see a number of sports socks uh, that we wear. Well, this clothing is, uh, we reuse it uh, an awful lot. For example, this t type of shirts, we have one shirt per month. Socks, we use a little bit more often because, of course, when we sport, we sweat. And so socks, we change about once a week. But that's it. So, one top per month, can't wash it. And one pair of socks per week. I can only presume it's the same for your underwear. But if this silly charade was real, which clearly it's not anyway, but if it was real, imagine how smelly, disgusting, unpleasant and unhealthy this place would be. And we've only touched upon the surface here. But people floating around, dead skin coming off them, not having shower for weeks on end, stinking, socks on they've had on all week, a top they've had on for a month. Imagine it. It's only going to get worse as well. Look. Hello, and welcome to the toilet of the International Space Station. Let's say you're up here on ISS and you need to go to the restroom. You want to come to this cabin, and the first thing you want to do is grab this piece of equipment and turn this rotor switch 90 degrees to the open position. What that does is it turns on a fan, which creates a suction effect in this hose so that you can use this yellow element for your number one. So, the system apparently draws through a, a suction system the urine down the tube. The problem is when we get to number two, this lady's going to claim it's the same section, uh, section uh, same technique, I suction, but it's essentially a bag and tag system. They sit on a toilet and go number two in a bag. So there's no suction system at play because you'd need to have a suction system actually inside the bag, drawing it to the bag. You haven't, as we're about to see. For number two, the principle is actually exactly the same, suction. We have a solid waste container here and on top of it is this uh, seat. Uh, and the solid waste container is connected via this hose to the same fan so that, again, the same suction effect allows you to do your number two in weightlessness. But you're going into a bag. Not, you're not doing that into a hole like you were with the urine thing. You're actually going into a bag. And the bag is actually wrapped around the top. So that is tosh, my dear. I want to show you how it looks, but since we don't want any bad smells uh, to come out, we're going to actually turn on the fan. It's going to be a little bit loud. There we go. Now you can lift the lid. And there is this uh, seat that sort of looks comfortable, but you don't really sit in, in, sit in weightlessness. So uh, most of us actually prefer to lift this one as well and use directly the, the opening that goes into the bag. And in fact, there is a bag. In so you use the opening that goes into the bag. So how does the suction system work to suck the number two 
from you into the bag. It doesn't. It's just a bag and tag system. But you're supposed to be in a weightless environment. So your technology has been exposed. Not difficult, again, admittedly. And the picture you're painting here, for anyone with the slightest bit of common sense, is an absolutely disgusting environment. Because of what you've just shown us, and if you were in a weightless environment, there'd be particles of number two flying all over the place here. Because this isn't a pump system. This is a bag and tag system. What makes it worse, you'd be sat there in your socks you've had on for a week and your top you've had on for a month, absolutely stinking, breathing in particles of the last person who went to the toilet. What a sorry state this place would be if it was actually real. In there, it looks like this. And uh, when we are done with our business, we close the bag and we push it down into the solid waste container. Yeah, exactly. It's a bag and tag system. There's no sucking involved regarding that bag. You claim there was, but you showed us there wasn't. And in doing so, you showed how ridiculous the ISS is, or would be if it was real, and how disgusting that environment would be if it was real. And now we've got Canadian legend Chris Hadfield going to continue the silliness. Hi, my name is Nicholas Hankovic from Corpus Christi School in grade 6. My question is, how do you wash your hands with soap and water in space? How do we wash our hands? Nicholas, I brought something to answer your question. Look closely at the camera. You can see this. It is no rinse body bath. No rinse body bath. And it's a bag with a straw. So now let's demonstrate. Okay, it's time to get clean. I'm going to squirt some water out. So, we so Chris is now squirting a valuable resource of water, which he's mixed to, to make this body wash or whatever. He's now squirting a valuable resource, and in doing so, in an electrical environment, turning a valuable resource, wasting it, potentially turning it into a dangerous environment. Can you see how fucking ridiculous all of this is? The only reason he's doing that is to try and fool naive or gullible or young people into believing absurdities like space stations orbiting scientifically impossible globes Earths. Because if this was real, and what we're about to see Chris wash his hands, all Chris would have done is contribute to the already disgusting space station, with number one, number two, dead hair, dead skin cells, all floating around, and now dirty hand wash water added to the mix in an electrical environment. So if what we, we were seeing here was true, we basically would be seeing Chris waste valuable resources unnecessarily, and in doing so endangering the lives of the people on the space station, when really all Chris would need to do was use a wet wipe to clean and wash his hands. Job done, no water wasted, everything's controlled and safe. But of course, Chris, is trying to sell this silly weightless lie in that is the International Space Station. Hence, we have to entertain all sorts of silliness and contradictions like we've seen here. A big ball of water and you put it on your hand. And now I've got... And don't even get me started on Chris's watch. Now, you're not going to take a watch to a weightless environment and have it two sizes too big so it's swinging all over your wrist that would get really annoying very quickly and would actually be quite sore on your wrist after a while but of course Chris hasn't really got a, a wrist watch on it's an augmented watch again to sell the lie of the weightless environment and that's why it's there swinging about you, it, they use the jewelry on the girls and watches on men It'd just be silly to entertain wearing a watch that was several sizes too big. It would do your head in. Again, another technique these clowns use. Water floating around on my hand. And so I'd wash my hands up with that. And then grab a towel. So what Chris has done is just wash his hands, create dirty water that is now floating around in a breathable space station. Okay? It's now joined the air. They are breathing along with number one, number two, dead hair, 
uh, dead skin and who knows what else would be there if this environment was real and what they've shown us and told us was real. Imagine if all this was real. Imagine one of these so-called astronauts sat on that toilet, that bag and tag system, having an upset tummy. Imagine the mess they'd make in a weightless environment. And then imagine these guys having their tea. Look. So absurd just based on their own claims put in pieces together you would never ever eat your food in that environment you'd have a controlled room where you sit and eat your food which was sealed off from the rest where you wouldn't have any contamination issues whatsoever coming from toilets dirty water from your hands supposedly being washed bizarre you didn't use wet wipes and of course the toilet itself number ones and number twos and dead skin and hair and all the other horribles that would be floating around in this and weightless in this weightless environment if it was real you'd certainly never be doing that tosh the only reason they throw water around and eat their food like this is to sell the lie that is the weightless lie of a space station orbiting a scientifically impossible globe earth you wouldn't throw your scarce water resource around a space station that's electrical you just wouldn't do it you'd use a wet wipe and you certainly had would uh, have a toilet that was sealed off in a scientific manner from the rest of the space station if all you had in place was a bag and tag system and most definitely you wouldn't be eating your food like this they interact with things like food and water with special effects called augmented reality. That's how they sell this lie. Obviously, they're not in space doing ludicrous speeds around the ball. Otherwise, we wouldn't have to point out these obvious problems day in, day out, week in, week out. The base claim that is a space station orbiting a ball is scientifically impossible anyway. And then you look at what they're telling you. It doesn't take someone. Doesn't take a genius to work it out, does it? Come on. <laughs>